Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to introduce our open source program. We started open source compliance 15 years ago and evolved open source governance continuously. Finally, we established open source programs now. I think our case study helps other companies which didn't start open source program yet. Before starting my presentation, let me introduce myself. I'm working for AG Electronics since 2003 for over 18 years. When I first joined AG, I developed UPnP, one of the protocol, and Linux driver, and so on. I am a developer. I went on maternity leave at the end of 2006, and when I joined the team again after the vacation, my boss introduced me with some new tasks. One of them was to create enterprise-wide open source guidelines. That's when I started working on open source, which I've been working with for almost half of my life. It's very easy to calculate how many years I've been doing open source work. It's the same age as my child. Thanks to my child, I came across a new job, open source, starting with open source compliance, building open source governance, and open source programs in AGE, and starting the first right open source project this year. This time, I would like to briefly talk about AG's open source story for about 15 years. Most of AG home appliances were based on ITOS before 2006. Around 2006, TVs based on embedded Linux began to be released. I was in the Linux technology development team at the time, and as our team doing research on Linux, we realized that Linux is open source and there is an open source license. So we have to comply with the open source license obligations. TV is the first product we included open source software notice. As we started making Linux product, we learned about the obligations of open source licenses and started to check and notify open source only for specific product families, not all of them. December 2009, SFAC filed against 14 companies using BGBox. It's a very big case then. So it was able to alert executives to the importance of open source compliance. After this news, we could establish a company-wide open source compliance process and disseminated it throughout the company in 2010. This is the beginning of a structured open source compliance process and launched an open source distribution site where customers can download open source notice and open source code in using AGE. As manages compliance risk for several major items company-wide. In 2011, compliance team found out that um, open source was important, so open source compliance risk was added to the main compliance management target. Since 2011, open source compliance risk prevention activities have been carried out every year. As we manage our compliance risk every year like this, we feel the need for a system because uh, while editing open source notice manually and repetitive text occurs often, so sometimes we miss it open source notice by mistake. So we need to manage them efficiently. Finally, in 2014, we developed the 
a system which can manage open source and license and automatically create open source software notice. In doing so, while using the system in 2017, we developed the post right that can perform all open source compliance in only one system and provide in-house service for all compliance processes. In this way, systematically proceeding with open source compliance in 2019, we announced LG as an open chain conformance company. And Postrite, which was serviced internally before, since 2017, uh, has been turned into an open source project this year. It's the long story of LGE. Let's take a closer look at LG case more. Through many years of experience, I have uh, compiled a list of uh, the five major components of open source compliance. This is also what I learned from lots of documents and lectures from Linux Foundation. The first is organization. Um, in order to start anything, we have to have someone first. There may be only one person first, but it is also an organization responsible for open source compliance anyway. Once an organization is created, there must be a company's policy and process. This is because policy and process such as available licenses may, be, may vary depending on the type or size of a company's service. Education is in the company based on this policy and process and compliance management based on it. As you proceed with open source compliance management like this, you will naturally need to use tools, which will be explained in more details later. As electronics has built open source compliance along this big axis. And let's take a look at Edge's open source compliance in details. First of all, organizations. Edge has an organization that manages the company-wide open source compliance and establishes company-wide policies and processes. It is OSPO, Open Source Program Office. Since Edge has several businesses, an open source organization has been created for each business division, and open source compliance teams in each business division guide each development team each. In other words, it has a centralized organization. We have four major policies. These are open source usage pilots to be followed by using open source. The pilots used when importing software from third part and the pilots to respond effectively when requested related to open source from outside. And last is the policy to contribute to open source communities. First, let me introduce as this open source compliance process based on Linux Foundation's guideline. Linux Foundation has 10 steps and we have only four steps. If we follow this process when developing software, we automatically meet all open source license obligations. We found that we need a tool and system to check properly and run efficiently without missing anything. So we use the open source program compliance tools and system in this start area. And this is the beginning of a first ride, which we started in 2014. 
based on these policies and processes we are conducting in-house training by creating online content and we educate developers about open source licenses and so on. And we also create and provide video content to make it easier to use open source compliance tools. In addition, open source rep representatives get together and hold open source workshops every quarter to share important issues such as the latest open source cases and trends and so on. Last, we provide open source consulting in-house. We use, use, we use the issue tracking system to answer open source compliance related inquiries. And based on this, we accumulate and provide open source related information as a week. We are also working to raise awareness of open source across the company by sending out on open source newsletters regularly every month. Here's a quick semantic overview of the tools we use for compliance. When developing software, we do open source analysis with the Postgres scanner. This includes dependency analysis, source code analysis, and binary analysis. At the end of this analysis process, we can get open source BOM, Bill of Materials. After we enter this into Postgres Hub, which is generated on open source notice, which will be published on the open source distribution site. Here's a close look at using Foresight Hub part uh, of the process. In the identification stage, the development team analyzes what open source used to develop the software. The result of the analysis is a Foresight report, which concluded open source BOM bill of materials and open source list. In the, in the approval stage, the development team sends the open source list to OSPO, Open Source Program Office, our team, and request to review and OSPO reviews and confirms that open source license is correct or not, and what the obligations are. The result is open source BOM. In the notice and verification stage, the development team create an open source package by collecting source code to be disclosed based on license obligations. OSPO generate an open source notice after verifying that this package has been created properly. Last in the distribution stage, the development team can comply with the open source obligation by distributing the open source package and open source notice generated by OSPO to the distribution site. For example, opensource.ag.com. This is a space when customers can view and download the open source software notice and open source package. The Postgres Hub and Postgres Scanner will release uh, this part. If you take a close look at Postgres Scanner, there are dependency scanner and analyze dependencies and a source code scanner that analyzes source code and binary scanner that analyzes binaries. In addition, we have developed the Android scanner and Yocto scanner that analyze more efficiently based on each platform. It's not open source yet, but we are considering whether to disclose this part also. Um, the first right hub can be seen as an all-in-one system that manages open source compliance and vulnerabilities at once. Let's look into Foresight Hub by each menu. Foresight manages licenses and open source and performs OSC processes in unit of project. It is also possible to review and manage open source received from a third party. 
This process is similar to project level identification stage. Post review is absolutely necessary in project and third party management, but self check allows developers to check each open source license and vulnerabilities by themselves without OSPOS review. Finally, open source vulnerability management is also possible. And it also provides a mailing function when new vulnerabilities are discovered in the existing project. The post right hub is truly a hub for all open source related things. Manage licenses and manage open source and manage vulnerabilities based on it. It, is, it also manages the entire compliance process as we saw earlier. VOM management is very important. Postline manages open source VOM also. You can manage the open source VOM for each product, product project. And when an issue occurs, all the history is managed, so this tracking is possible. Um, as you announced the open chain conformance, and I think it, this is thanks to Postlight. This is because Postlight satisfies, satisfies all of the following specification of open chain. For example, bit of materials, license compliance, and compliance artifact. If you want the perfect open source compliance, definitely Postlight is essential. We released the open source compliance system developing for seven years as the Postlight open source project. Many people ask that Postlight means and whether the logo is a paper airplane or not. Actually, Postlight means the light of free open source software. And we hope to illuminate the open source compliance world. The first right site and guide can be found here. Here you can find a detailed description of the first right hub and first right scanner and how to install it and use it. Also, you can find the REST APIs of first right. You can integrate the other system, for example, source scanning system or binary scanning system and so on. In the guide, you can learn the tools by doing it yourself. The guide will be continuously updated and is provided Korean and English. No other language is supported. If Forthright is a good tool, I believe it will translate naturally into multiple languages by contributors. It's my dream. Yeah, I welcome to the contributions. We created a demo site to make it easy to experience Postlight without installing it. We also provide a Docker image to provide an easy way for each companies to install. You can see the source code for yourself by visiting github.com Postlight. There are Postlight Hub and Postlight scanner, Scanners. So scanner and dependency scanner and binary scanner will be released soon. And let's take a quick look at how it is performing open source compliance through force right. Let's video, let's watch the video together. 
of a false light, I think you can do everything with the false light because it's an open source. Let's watch one more video. Using false light hub, developers can check open source license also vulnerabilities by just uploading open source report without any review. It's very useful. Let's move on the open source program office. OSS.ez.com site describes as its open source programs. Also, not many here, you can also check out open source projects by run by EDGE. In addition, EDGE's open source governance guide is publicly introduced so that other companies can refer to it. Recently, we opened YouTube channel. You can watch more videos related to post-write and there is English version and Korean version. As we do open source compliance and open source activities by releasing open source tools as post-write, we naturally play a role as an open source program office. We are conducting processes, tools, consulting, and external responses, which are the major pillars of compliance. By building processes for contribution and operating on open source portal site and operating on open source project, we cover the open source contribution part. Last, 
the part we need to supplement a little more is the spread of open source culture. It is necessary to further disseminate the communications and discussions that are common in open source projects through training. So far, we have talked about the history of 15 years before this open source program was created. I hope this case study will be of some help to you and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.